In this video, we're going to be doing a brake job on this Ford F-150. So we're going to start by removing our wheel. Our wheel's a little bit different here than yours will probably be. We have all locking lug nuts on our wheel. So unfortunately, I won't be able to give you a size, but you go ahead and take your wheel off. Okay, so once our wheel's removed, we're going to start at the front, work our way back. We're going to start right here with this wheel cap. Flathead screwdriver, get in there and just pry that cap off. And that will give you access to your nut, your stud, and your washer in the back here, which will also give you access to your bearing. Now I know we said we were going to start at the front and work our way back, but that's as far as we're going to take this. Now we'll work on our caliper. So now we're going to remove our caliper. We have two bolts holding in our caliper. They're going to be half inch. We'll remove these. So now that we have our last bolt coming out here, we need to be ready to take our caliper and hang it out of the way without doing any stress to the line. You have a section of hard line and then a section of rubber. So we have a hanger ready for when we remove this bolt and pull our caliper away. So that's our two bolts. And we can start to work our caliper away from the pads and the bracket. Now this actually looks like it's stuck in place. So we're going to take a flathead or a small pry bar to see if we can work that caliper off. Now we are replacing the hardware here so I'm not too concerned about bending that. If you don't have new hardware, don't bend those. Okay, once you have your caliper free, this one a pad came with it. We're going to hang our caliper on our hanger and up by our coil spring. Up and out of the way and then we can take our pads and pop them right out of their hardware and discard those. So now on this specific vehicle the bracket for your caliper is part of the knuckle here, so the bracket will not come off. So now we're going to remove our hardware. Now that we have our caliper and our caliper hardware removed, we're going to focus on our rotor. Now the rotor on this vehicle is going to come off from the front here. We'll see we have a cotter pin and a few different pieces behind it. We also have a couple of bearings that are going to come along with this. So we're going to take a long needle nose plier and we'll start by unbending our cotter pin so that we can push it through and remove it. Now anytime you remove a cotter pin like this or remove one at all, you should replace it with a brand new one. Behind your cotter pin, you have a little safety nut, and then behind that, you'll have an actual nut. So now this nut here is going to be a 27 millimeter. We'll remove that, and it shouldn't be very tight. Now, once you remove this nut. You're going to want to have either a small pick or a small screwdriver handy. You're going to want to remove this nut, but not take it all the way off. 
keep it close, pull back that washer with it. Behind there, you'll have a bearing. Once you start to mess with this bearing, your rotor will drop forward. Be ready for that. Ideally, you're going to take out this bearing, the washer, and the nut together. Once you've removed those, you can take your rotor and slide it right off. So now what we're going to do is clean up where our new brake hardware is going to go. Right here, top and bottom. We're just getting rid of any loose corrosion. Okay, so now we're going to put some grease where our brake hardware is going to go. This will help again with preventing corrosion in this area. And it will slightly reduce squeaking or any noise from that hardware. We'll do this top and bottom. Once you have a thin coat of grease on there, we can put our hardware in place. Now this is easier done now than after your rotor is on. You have a lot more room to work here. So now your new rotors are going to come with a coating of grease or oil for shipping so they don't corrode. We're going to just brake clean that away. All right, now we're ready to put it on the vehicle. Okay, so now is the hardest part of the install. You're going to take your rotor, slide it up onto the spindle, and all the way back onto your inner bearing without letting go of your rotor. Because without your front bearing, I'll show you now, it will come sliding forward. So we're going to make sure our, that we, now that we've done that, our wheel seal is in place. And our rear bearing, our inside bearing, is also in place. We're going to slide our rotor up onto the inside bearing. We're going to keep pressure there. And we're going to put our front bearing in place. going to put our washer and then we're going to put our nut we're going to continue we're going to push everything back give it a little rotate make sure we're seated onto that inner bearing and then we'll torque this down. So now that we have this retainer nut in place, our inside and outside bearings in place, our washer in place, everything is in place. And this rotates. Now is the point where you're going to take this nut here and you're going to tighten it down to seat your bearings to 50 foot-pounds. Okay, now you've locked your rotor up, but you've seated your bearings. So now we're going to back this off up to about 90 degrees or quarter turn. Okay, so now what we're going to do is tighten this lock nut down to 16 inch pounds. All right, so now we're going to put our spindle nut lock in place. We're just going to line it up with the holes so that we can get our new cotter pin through. Once you have your new cotter pin through, go ahead and bend those tabs at the bottom open to lock the cotter pin in place. Once that's done, we can reinstall our center cap. And that's as simple as lining it up and 
pushing it in place. Now that we have our center cap in place, we're going to clean the outside of our rotor with brake clean. Give it a quick wipe, try and remove all those shipping greases and oils. Now we're going to install our brake pads. This one here with this bracket is going to go on the outside. This one's going to go on the inside. We're going to set them in just like this with the tab to the rear. And the front. Okay, so now we're going to take our caliper off of our hanger. Again, be careful not to stress your brake line. I'm going to rotate it here just to show you that our piston on our caliper is too far out now to go over brand new pads. So the pads have more material on them, so they're thicker. So the piston would need to be further back. To accomplish getting your caliper onto your new pads, we're going to need to compress that piston. I'm going to set our tool up. and compress that piston all the way in. Okay, so now that you have your piston compressed, we can take our caliper, slide it onto our pads. And you'll know you're lined up if you can't see the back as well. If you can see the brackets in the front from your front pad, that metal bracket lines up with the two holes in your caliper. Once you're lined up, we can take our pins, slide them into place, and we can thread them in. All right, so we're going to finger tighten them here. And then we'll torque them down. All right, we're going to torque down our caliper pins here to 141 foot-pounds. Okay, now we're going to reinstall our wheel. And for us, put on all of our locking lug nuts. We're going to snug these up in a star pattern. So now with our vehicle on the ground so our tire can't rotate, we're going to torque down our lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds. We're going to do it in a crisscross pattern. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.